Following the Clone War, the Empire converted the largest shipyards in the galaxy from the production of vessels utilized by the Republic to the production of massive new starships, chief among them the Imperial One-Class Star Destroyer. The Empire's Star Destroyers would become one of the most recognizable symbols of its strength, and successfully carried out the defensive needs of the Empire by crushing all uprisings and acts of sedition against Imperial hegemony. Roughly 30 years after the fall of the Empire, the First Order would come to build and rely upon its own version of the Star Destroyer to project its power across the galaxy. One such starship was the Resurgent-class Star Destroyer. Although they were based upon the Empire's Imperial One-class, the First Order's Resurgent class contained features that were far more advanced, technological advances that were required given the far smaller population of the First Order in comparison to the Empire. In this video expose, I will compare the First Order's Resurgent class Star Destroyer and the Empire's Imperial One class Star Destroyer, noting their similarities and differences in regard to their weapons, defensive capabilities, and other important features. The Empire's Imperial One-Class Star Destroyer had a total length of 1,600 meters, making them much larger than the Venator-Class Star Destroyers utilized by the Republic in the Clone Wars era, which had a total length of 1,155 meters. These Imperial Star Destroyers carried a total crew of 46,803 individuals. Of this total, 9,253 were officers, with an additional 27,850 being enlisted personnel. They also carried a contingent of 9,700 stormtroopers. To support this total crew of almost 50,000, the Empire outfitted each Imperial One-class Star Destroyer with enough consumables to last for two years. The First Order's Resurgent-class Star Destroyer had a total length of roughly 2,916 meters making them almost double the size of their predecessors developed by the Empire. Each of these massive Star Destroyers carried a crew of roughly 82,000, with 19,000 being officers and 55,000 being enlisted personnel. Further, each Resurgent-class vessel included a complement of over 8,000 stormtroopers. To help maintain and operate such an enormous ship, the First Order developed stringent protocols the Star Destroyer's personnel had to follow. Each day was divided into six four-hour work shifts, which would be adopted amongst three rotating crews. Not only did this ensure the Resurgent-class Star Destroyers were properly maintained, it developed a strong sense of unity and identity amongst the crews. Imperial One-class Star Destroyers were equipped with a navigational deflector shield generator, which was located on the underside of the vehicle's front tip. To further defend the Empire's Star Destroyers, this deflector shield generator worked together with two bridge deflector shield domes located on top of the bridge. These shields provided the Star Destroyer with enough defensive power to fully protect the hull of the ship even from a direct crash from a vehicle the size of a GR-75 medium transport. Resurgent-class Star Destroyers similarly featured deflector shield generators to help protect these massive ships. Not surprisingly, given the increased size, the First Order's Star Destroyers featured more generators than their Imperial counterparts. A flight deck deflector shield projector was located on the front tip of the vessel's bow. Two additional deflector shield projectors worked to protect the main hull of the Star Destroyer, located on the port and starborn stern sections. Finally, the bridge benefited from its own dedicated deflector shield projector that protected the officers located within the Star Destroyer's bridge, which was further enhanced by a bridge deflector shield augmenter located further up the vessel's keel line. Coupled with the bridge's point defense turrets, it's clear the First Order learned from the lessons of the Battle of Endor, and ensured that their Resurgent-class Star Destroyers could not suffer the same fate of the Executor. In order to project the full might and superiority of the Empire on dissidents and those who opposed Imperial supremacy, Imperial One-class Star Destroyers were outfitted with a wide array of weapon emplacements. Chief among them were the vessel's 60 Taman Bach XX-9 heavy turbolaser batteries. In addition to these heavy batteries, 
the Empire Star Destroyers also featured six dual-heavy turbolaser turrets, two quad-heavy turbolasers, three triple-medium turbolasers, and two medium turbolasers. Complementing the Star Destroyer's turbolaser emplacements were 60 Borstal NK-7 ion cannons, with a further two dual-heavy ion cannon turrets. Finally, located at the very front of the Imperial One-class Star Destroyer was a forward pursuit tractor beam array, which worked in tandem with the ship's 10 tractor beam projectors. Needless to say, Kuat Drive Yards, the manufacturer of the Imperial One-class, ensured that the Star Destroyer could bring a devastating amount of firepower to bear against the Empire's enemies. As impressive as the offensive capabilities of the Imperial One-class Star Destroyer were, even they were incomparable to the weapon systems found on the First Order's Resurgent Class Star Destroyer. The Resurgent Class featured over 1,500 turbo lasers and ion cannons. This sheer volume of firepower allowed these Star Destroyers to fulfill a number of different offensive roles, such as orbital assaults and ship-to-ship -ship combat. The turbo lasers of the First Order Star Destroyers were particularly deadly, as they were powerful enough to overload the shields of enemy ships and directly penetrate through heavy armor. Further, they could also carry out orbital bombardments that were able to reduce the entire surface of a planet to molten slag. The turbolaser emplacements of the resurgent class star destroyers were so powerful due to their impressive upgrades from those utilized during the era of the Empire, allowing for more devastating firepower and a faster recharge rate. Within their turbo lasers, the First Order utilized kyber crystal technology from crystals harvested from secret locations within the Unknown Regions. However, it should be noted that these military-grade kyber crystals were in short supply, meaning that the technology could only be used in the most prestigious vessels, such as Kylo Ren and General Hux's finalizer. Finally, smaller point defense turrets and missile emplacements ensured that these Star Destroyers were equally capable against smaller and more agile enemy starships and starfighters. Imperial One-class Star Destroyers were powered by seven primary engines. These propulsion systems allowed the Star Destroyer to achieve a maximum atmospheric speed of up to 975 kilometers per hour. To make the jump to light speed, Imperial One-class Star Destroyers were outfitted with a Class II hyperdrive system. However, it should be noted that the propulsion system of these Imperial Star Destroyers were not conducive to planet-side atmospheres, as the vessel's full power was needed to ensure that it didn't crash into the planet's surface. The First Order's Resurgent Class Star Destroyers were powered by a large triple-I A1A primary hypermatter annihilation reactor located within a single containment vessel on the underbelly of the vehicle. To achieve its necessary propulsion, these Star Destroyers contained 11 engines, three of which were large KDY destroyer ion engines, and the remaining eight being smaller Gemin 8 ion engines. Located around the three larger engines were the vessel's primary thrust nozzles, with secondary thrust nozzles positioned around the eight smaller engines. These thrust nozzles provided the resurgent class star destroyers with greater control and maneuverability. The totality of these propulsion systems allowed the star destroyer to achieve speeds of over 1,000 kilometers per hour but in doing so, would greatly decrease its maneuverability. So there we have it, the similarities and differences between the First Order's Resurgent Class Star Destroyer and the Empire's Imperial One Class Star Destroyer. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For learning from the mistakes of others.